for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the man. She's always got a tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over the principles of run defense. I'm going to give you guys numerous tips and tricks on how to be better against the run, no matter what defense you like to use, no matter what playbook you like to use. But as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, maybe a passing tips video next, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go right into the video. Now, when it comes to run defense, before I get into adjustments you can make and stuff like that, certain defenses just do better naturally against certain types of run plays, specifically when it comes to zone coverages. Cover four is a much better run defense in general than pretty much any other defense in the game. That's whether you like to use cover four quarters, cover four palms, which are typically matching principles, or whether you like to use something that's more of a traditional cover four, like a cover four drop. And the reason for that is simple. Cover four is the only defense in the game where the safeties will assist essentially attack the run first as long as you don't guess pass. Typically when it comes to every other defense, the zone coverage drops that the cornerbacks and safeties are making will typically drop back first to play the pass, but cover four is different. In cover four, only the cornerbacks drop back. So as long as I don't guess pass, like on this play here, you'll see how these safeties will essentially walk down and play their run fits, making the defense much stronger against pretty much inside or outside runs. So you'll see when the play starts, the cornerbacks typically drop back because obviously they don't want to get beat deep, but that's typical of just about every single defense in the game. No cornerback is going to give up a huge pass play in lieu of a run play unless you run commit, which I'll get into later. But the safeties in every other defense typically do the same, although here you can see they immediately play down and fill, almost like uh, the role of extra linebackers. So it's best to just keep the safeties and cover four close to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see that you'll get very good uh, you know, run commit style defense from them, just as long as you don't guess pass. Now I'm in a cover two, you'll see the difference, especially in the safeties. Even if I press and bring them down to the box, they essentially essentially walk themselves out of the play and become pretty useless as you can see um, you know they're about the running backs about 10 yards down the field before the safety even comes to play so if you can't stop the run especially when it comes to up the middle of the field take a look at what your safeties are doing because they could be the problem next I'm going to show you guys how to set up your run defense now when it comes to run defense there's two things that you're looking for you want to take away any gaps which you can see here we have a huge gap between my defensive tackle and my defensive ends which is a problem and you want to also take away outside leverage which is typically going to be defined by uh, your closest box defender compared to their box tight end or left tackle, right tackle, whatever's on the edge of the offensive line, you want to have a defender that's outside of that so it can basically take away any outside leverage and not allow a lot of outside runs. Now, this particular play is not going to be a very good defense. Some plays don't have the ability to close those gaps. So something like this, no matter what I do, no matter how much I pinch my defense or pinch my linebackers or whatever I do, there's just no way to get rid of this gap. A defensive look like this is going to be much much better. Number one, I have some size on the field, which is also important. You want to try to match strength with strength. If they have two tight ends blocking, you're going to want to have something that's closer to a 3-4 or 4-3. Uh, typically, 4-3s are not that great, though. 3-4s are typically best when it comes to gaps and leverage, once again. But ultimately, 3-4s gives you a much better opportunity to close up those gaps and still keep outside leverage, which is something that I already have when it comes to these outside linebackers. Sometimes to create that outside leverage, you just want to walk them out a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, one of the better ways to go is to just pinch the entire defense. Now to do that, you're just going to hit the right bumper or the R1 button and then down the left stick. And you're going to see how here you can see immediately we close up those inside gaps and then we still have outside leverage mostly because I walk these linebackers out to the edge. So this is going to be something, I mean, there's multiple ways to do this. You can see that the safeties come down as well, which is obviously very important. You could also do things like base aligning and show blitz and stuff like that. As you can see now, we have our linebackers walking right over the gaps with the guards which is also a very good look so there's a lot of different ways to set up a lot of different you know good defensive looks um, through a lot of different formations this is another defense even though it's not a very good run defense traditionally because the cornerbacks drop back leaving you kind of vulnerable outside you can still create a very good run defense with this all you really have to do pinch your entire defense you'll see how the defensive tackles just get a little bit closer together and then you just walk these uh you know safeties slash cornerbacks to the outside here to basically create what almost looks like a 4-4 look. This here gives you everything you need. All your gaps are filled up. All of your uh, outside leverage is there as they started to play before I expected. I didn't even do anything and you can see we get a stop. Now when it comes to running players, you'll notice that a lot of them typically like to run from under center. Formations like I-form, single back, 
things like that have a lot more variety when it comes to run plays. Like this particular formation right here, it could easily be a stretch to the outside. It could be an inside zone or between the guard and the tackle. It could be a halfback dive. It could be an 0-1 trap right up the middle. There's so many different successful variations when it comes to running under center compared to other formations. With that being said, the next tip is about gun formation players. A lot of people probably spend most of the game in gun formations. I would say 60% of the passing done in Madden or more are done from gun formations, but people are still going to want to run from time to time. So when you see gun formations, there's really only one main option when it comes to running out of this formation. It's typically the inside zone, which is something that goes straight up the middle. So knowing that, you can always shift your defense, which is basically going to be hitting the R1 button once again, or the RB button on Xbox, and then shifting your defense to the right, which is going to be left stick to the right. Doing that basically just gives me a small advantage there's not a lot of run plays, at least not successful run plays when it comes to gun that typically go in the opposite direction. I mean, there are counter plays, there are 0-1 traps, there are uh, run plays that are basically like sweep runs, but they're all pretty rare and they all don't get used very much. So if you account for 90% of the runs that are going to be from this formation to be inside zones, you can easily just, just shift your defense in that direction to basically give yourself a small advantage. You can also shoot the gap if you stay back here and basically wait for the ball to be handed off before coming down into the hole and a lot of times you can make the play yourself next up size matters always wait for your opponent to show their hand first and show what offensive formation they're running if you wait long enough it will always show and you'll always have about 10 or more seconds to pick a matching play based off of the personnel that your opponent is in if they come out a two tight end set or more it's typically best to match in a 3-4 or 4-3 or maybe even bigger packages like a 4-4 i find that you can get away with things like nickel packages against those heavier formations but you can't really get away from with that with things like dime packages so you always want to be within the range of success when it comes to size you always want to match to a certain degree uh, based off of what your opponent's size package is on offense now when it comes to run committing this is going to be something that you're going to want to do sparingly this is not going to be something that you want to do um, you know very often I would say it's rarely used at best the only times you're going to want to run commit is maybe if it's like a fourth and inches a critical situation uh, fourth and goal you think your opponent's going to run it uh, maybe you're down late in the game uh, and, you, and your opponent's trying to run the clock out uh, even in that situation you can't run commit too much because your opponent will figure it out and they'll essentially just switch to a pass play and beat you for a touchdown because when you run commit every single player on the field goes after the running back and completely abandons their assignment as far as the receivers go so to run you're just going to want to hit the R1, RB button and then down the right stick and you're going to see how every single defender is going to go running right after the running back. Now I would say my job would be since nobody's going to be in pass coverage, it probably makes sense for you to individually as a user be in pass coverage to make sure that you don't get uh, beat for anything big but you can see how the entire defense runs right after the running back making it a much easier way to stop the run but a much harder way to stop the pass. So that's, that's the vid. If you guys enjoyed this vid make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.